I will not conform. Conformity is what the world is calling for. Conformity. I want that to sink in. Conformity. The left, the media, Hollywood, the entertainment industry, the sports industry, and many mainline denominations and non-denominational churches are conforming to this world. Conformity. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. That is, to be outwardly shaped or molded. Conformity. The word world here in our text literally means age. The word is aeon, referring to the present sinful age, the world system that is now dominated by Satan. You know, Satan is the God of this world. The Bible says in Romans, in 2 Corinthians, excuse me, chapter 4 and verse 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world is the devil. Yeah. Amen. The world is the age, this present sinful age. Let me give you a good working definition of the word world. World here represents the sum of the demonic human philosophy of life. The sum of the demonic human philosophy of life, of this life, is the world. The world is a floating mass of thoughts, opinions, maxims, speculations, hopes, impulses, aims, and aspirations at any time current in the world. It is a floating mass, I want to repeat that, of thoughts, opinions, maxims, speculations, hopes, impulses, aims, aspirations at any time current in the world. And see, the world changes. And one of the reasons the world has such a problem, has such a problem with Christianity is that to be a Christian, Christians resist change. It depends on what the change is all about. Are you with me? See, this is why we're told in no uncertain terms, to love not this floating mass of thoughts, impulses, maxims, speculations, aspirations, and hopes that are current at any time in the world. Second, First uh, John chapter two verse fifteen says, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world." If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love of world precludes love of the Father. You can't love both. To love this world is to not love God the Father. To love God the Father is to not love the world. And the Bible tells us, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. Someone says, someone says, there's nothing in this world. Satan has nothing to offer. That's not true. 
The world has everything to offer that your flesh craves. It can't offer you anything for your soul that'll make you born again. But the yearnings and the cravings of fallen human nature is in the world. Why do you think so many of our athletes and entertainers and people who uh, came up in church, but as soon as they made it big, why do you think they've forgotten Christ and turned their back on the church and begin to talk a language that uh, you know that they weren't raised to speak? They fell in love with the world. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. That is what the flesh longs for. That's in the world. I want to be a movie star. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to, I want to be, I want to be on Good Morning America. I want to be on the Today Show. I, I want, to, I, I want, I want, I want, I want. I want, I want to win the Super Bowl. I want to make the team. All that is in the world. Anything that your flesh craves. The world says, I have it for you. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. The sinful things, every sinful thing that is appealing to you, appealing to your eyes, is in the world. They can't pass enough laws to stop pornography. They can't pass, they can't put enough things in place to block the things, to keep us from doing things in the world that look good to us because the world appears, appeals to your eyes. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That is the accomplishments in life that, uh, that we draw from to make us feel that we are someone in and of ourselves. I have a degree. I am somebody. I built a shopping center, I am somebody. I work for a Fortune 500 company, I am somebody. I own a Fortune 500 company, that makes me somebody. The world, human accomplishment. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. The Bible says these things, uh, 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 pride of life says these things are not of the Father, but they're of the world. But here's the kicker here, and the world passeth away and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world has a powerful lure. It has the ability to draw people. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 10, 2 Timothy chapter 4, excuse me, and in verse 10, it says, For Demoth has forsaken me. Why did Demas desert the apostle? The apostle says, having loved this present world. He loved the world. He felt that what the world had to offer was more appealing to his eyes, to his flesh, and to his pride than the sufferings that Paul was going through at the time. And he decided to forsake Paul. If you read Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, Philemon, verse 24, you will see where this Demas was one of the honorable mentions of the apostle Paul. He was one of the men that, 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 that Paul would mention and say, along with Aristarchus and others, well, Demas salutes you. This mighty man of God, this man of faith and power, forsook the apostle because he loved the world. Love of world is something that you have to pray against. Love of world is something that you have to resist because the devil is a master at luring people from the church to the world, to this uh, uh, floating mass of thoughts, opinions, and maxims, and speculations, and hopes, and impulses, aims, and aspirations 
that are current in the world. I'm always, I, I, I keep talking about it because it seems to come up every 30 days in the black community. I'm always moved by these uh, little uh, uh, speculations and demonic human philosophies that come up that seem to get the attention of our youth. I, I still marvel. Why is it that it's so easy? Why is it easy to get you to disbelieve the Bible? What is it about you? Why do things that go against the teachings of Christ, why do these things appeal to you? What makes these things interesting? It's the world. Be careful of the world. Now we see a social, political, non-religious, unholy alliance taking shape. We see this happening. It is the world and it's happening in the world. We see homosexuals, transgenders, alternative lifestyle people, many unsuspecting minorities, Muslims and left-leaning black folk, Hispanics and American Indians coming together to form a new majority if possible. We are in the age of, uh, of a, we're in the midst of a grievance society. Everybody has a grievance now. This group is marching and they're striking and this group is marching and everybody, everybody now is a victim and, and, uh, and we're striking and, and we're demanding things. I still marvel that we live in a nation where you can be here illegally and march and demand certain things while waving the flag of the country that you illegally came from to come into this country. And then, hey, Andre, good to see you, man. Then we're crazy enough to get out there and march with him. That's the world. In the world now, wickedness is called a strength. I'll never forget how President Obama and First Lady Michelle applauded the young man, uh, basketball player, seven feet tall, engaged to a young lady for breaking off the engagement. They, 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 he was applauded uh, and called a uh, strength because uh, he came out as a homosexual. Or uh, you get a, a call from the White House because you come out uh, uh, you drafted in the NFL, Did, didn't make the team, couldn't, couldn't play, praise the Lord. But we treated that lifestyle as a virtue. That's the world. I want to help open your eyes here. Amen. These progressives tend to see themselves as people who believe in reform. Follow me now. In changing society uh, for what they call is better. Now keep in mind that definition of better uh, leaves the God of the Bible out. Their reforms aren't reforms towards scripture. It's re their reforms away from scripture. They are socially liberal, most of them, favoring more the rights of women and homosexuals and minorities. They believe in modernization and technological progress. And uh, this modernization, or a better word, uh, is modernity, this movement, uh, is, is the theology. In theology, it is to accommodate traditional religious teachings to contemporary thought and especially to devalue supernatural elements. That is to take what we once always believed and make it fit or change it to go along with the contemporary mores of society. Other words, what was wrong yesterday is no longer wrong today. That's what that that's the world. Changing everything. 
God of the Bible said that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. The leftist said, no, uh, everybody uh, will for, will to, will for marital rights. Everybody, any combination. Male and male or male and uh, female and female should be accommodated. That is taking, that's modernity. They, take, they took what God said and turned it on its head. That's the world. I can't get an amen in here. Amen. And then they devalue supernatural elements. You know, you know one of the leading supernatural elements that the world tries to devalue? And that is the change that takes place when you get born again. Praise the Lord. They devalue God's healing power. Devalue baptism in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues. And the supernatural elements of what we believe. See, for the saints to be supernatural is natural. Amen. Amen. And it's natural to be supernatural. We know that the Lord is a healer. We know that God is a way maker. We know that God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. These are the supernatural elements of our faith. We can't let go of those things. Praise the Lord. You're, you all are trying to kill the supernatural with some of all these sad songs we sing. Songs that have no power. By the time you get up to preach, the, the house is dead because we've been lulled you to sleep. Because the songs have no oomph. You don't like me, but I know. But you see, you got to remember, there ain't but one watchman on this wall. And I don't share that. I know what I'm talking about. You'll see. It, it, it'll all come out. I've never been wrong on these things. It'll all come out after a while, and I'm going to have a whole line of you lined up to say, I want to apologize to the pastor. I'm going to give you the mic. This is a trick of Satan. When the prize fighter gets ready to fight, he listens to something to fire him up. When the football team gets ready to play ball, they listen to something to fire them up. When the basketball team goes out to play, these are your Chicago Bulls. They go out, listen to something that fires them up. Now when we get ready, This modernity, it is a self-conscious break with the past. And, and it is a search for new forms of expression. It's not the way we do it anymore. People aren't doing it like this anymore, Pastor. Pastor, they don't do it like that anymore. anymore. A self-conscious break. An intentional break with the past. The new bad word is the word tradition. All traditions now have been placed in the category of called old school, which is a polite way of dismissing them. Oh yeah, Bible tells us that we're to move not the old landmarks. Jeremiah says, says ask for the good old way. See if you could find someone who will walk therein. And the sad thing was, uh, in Jeremiah, they couldn't find anybody who would walk in the good old way. I'm going to preach in just a moment. But we see this new form of expression as we see uh, dark churches. New form of expression. We've broken with the past and, and uh, churches that are devoid of the cross. Or if there are, if there is a cross, you can't tell it's a cross. It's so, it's so, it's so, enshrined in some design you got to look at it like you're looking at a Picasso or, or uh, what, what is that art uh, called abstract you got to stand there all day yeah. <laughs> oh I see it now something's wrong with that something's wrong with that 
We've taken the church out, the cross out, and, uh, and uh, we're in the Laodicean age, full expression, because we've lost the spirit of apathy has taken over. And that, that, that explains the new casual approach to God. The new casual approach is apathetic because, see, when people are doing something that's important to them, they don't approach it casually. We, this new casual, laid-back uh, approach to God. We come to the house of God looking like we're on our way to the beach. We're not hungry for the Lord. We're not hungry for a move. We're not hungry for deliverance. We're not hungry for breakthrough. The Bible says in the Laodicean age, men will say, because I am rich and increased with goods, and here it is, have need of nothing. Apathy, laid back. Oh, man, no sense of urgency. I'm, look, I'm cool. Every, hey, laid back. That's what we're seeing. This is, this is the modern move of the church. And, and for people to be on fire for the things of God, it's almost now uh, 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 passe and a thing of the past. One of our guests uh, who were with us, uh, I think it was Wednesday, Thursday night, the preacher said to me, as, as the man of God preached and, the, and God was moving on the altar and young people were getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and the Lord was breaking through, the preacher said to me, I haven't seen this in a long time. I want you to come to our church. I, it's, it's rare nowadays to see a move of God. And, and many times, saints, the move of God that we experience, we assume that you can find a move of God any and everywhere. But people are now outlawing moves of God. There, there are churches who say that all that calling on Jesus and clapping your hands and getting excited, they will actually say, this is not a part of our culture. We do not allow that here. This is not the way we do. Oh, my. Oh, my. But God's been too good to me for me not to clap my hands. He's brought me from too far for me not to get excited about him. He's healed me. He's lifted me. He's kept me. He's never left me. If I'm going to lift my voice, I'm going to lift my voice for him. Or I will lift my voice not at all. If I'm going to clap my hands, I'm clapping my hands for him. Or I won't clap my hands at all. If I'm going to dress up, I'm going to dress for him. Or I will dress not at all. For he is my God. He's my king. And he's my Lord. Somebody shout, I won't conform. Mm. In our churches, in some cases, well-meaning, but in most cases, misguided pastors, in an attempt to remain relevant, have just become plain old worldly. Trying to be relevant, we've become worldly. And a bomb, a word bomb that has been placed in our lexicon, in our nomenclature, a word bomb that has shaken us. And I'm telling you, more than we, we even realize is the word that was the ambiguous word that was introduced, the call change. Change is a beautiful word if it's wrapped. It has to be in context of. Change from what? And change to whom? Where am I going? So you see, just change without any direction is not good. See, the gospel preacher who preaches Change now has changed his nomenclature. For Jesus didn't call us to preach change. Jesus called us to preach deliverance. There's a difference between change and deliverance. Now deliverance is a change, but it's a certain kind of change. See, people are dying now because they, they are taking drugs that are killing them. So you can change from cocaine. And to help ease your habit, you take up smoking. That's change. 
but you've gone from one vice to another vice. You can change from hard drugs to hard liquor. You've just gone from one vice to another vice. Jesus didn't offer us change from one vice to another. The Bible teaches that, that, that the captives went free and blind eyes came open. You see, there is a certain kind of change that the God of the Bible gives us. Amen. When we talk change without emphasis on from whom to what, we are changing, uh, we, and, and we, don't, we don't talk about who we're leaving and who we're going to. Uh, that is not good. And let me tell you something. What is one of the major hallmarks of the God of the Bible? I'm almost through preaching. But one of his major hallmarks is his unchangeableness. Oh, yeah. The essence of, of the God of the Bible is his existence. You remember in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, Moses wanted to know, whom shall I say sent me? Pharaoh, who do I tell? He says, tell them I am. That I am. That, I, that is, I am he who always is. God identified himself by his existence. We serve the God of necessary existence. That means the God of the Bible cannot not exist. He exists. He is eternal. E meaning no. Term meaning time. Time has no bearing on him. He made time. That's why I, I often say that God is good. I don't say God is good all the time. That's to limit God's goodness. God was good before he made time. And he'll be good when time shall be no more. He's just good. Over in eternity, he'll still be good. Glory to God. When, 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 the, when that, that long day, God will still be good. We serve a God who cannot not be. Amen. Because if he could disappear and not exist, that means he would be limited. Because to be limited is not to be. But we serve a God who has always been and shall always be. He can't change. Praise the Lord. Any details because everything is wrapped up in his existence. The Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. Number one that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Bible says this about the uh, unchangeableness of the God of the Bible. Psalms 102 verse 25 through 27, the A clause says, of old hast thou laid the foundations of the earth. And the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shall endure. Hallelujah. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. And as a vesture shall thou change them. You will change the foundations of the earth and the works of your hands like people change clothes. Hallelujah. He says, and they shall be changed. Verse 27 of that psalm, the A-clause says, but thou art the same. The God of the Bible doesn't age. The God of the Bible remains. That's Psalms 102. And then uh, uh, the B clause of verse 27 says, uh, and thy years shall have no end. Also Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, the Lord says, I am the Lord thy God. I change if not. And then I heard the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 3, 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. James got in the fray in James 1 and 17 and said, every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither is there any shadow 
of turning. We serve a God who is changeless. Hallelujah. And we serve a God who settles our life. See, the devil want to get you in a constant state of change, in a constant state of moving, uh, going here, going there, up, up, uprooting, doing this, doing that. No, 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 no. We serve a God. He doesn't keep you on the move. We serve a God who settles you. Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 10, but the God of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect establish, strengthen, and settle you. See, our God brings peace to our life. He gets rid of the chaos. He gets rid of, the, the God of the Bible doesn't keep you in a state of constant flux, in a state of constant change, but he settles you. My God, I'm like the songwriter who said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand all of the ground is sinking sand. Somebody say amen. Oh, my God, what a mighty God we serve. His truth to the preachers here, preachers who are listening, the truth of the gospel, the truth of Christianity, the truth of the God of the Bible is a timeless truth. The Bible says in Psalms 100 and verse 5, uh, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth. To all generations. It didn't say that his truth changes from generation to generation. Didn't say that his truth changes based on who's in the White House. Didn't say that his truth changed just because a man may declare that what God said is no longer true. But the truth of God endures from one generation to another. Some of you won't say amen right there because you conformed to the world. But ask God to forgive you and ask God now to give you strength to stand your ground. God give me power not to give in. Uh, bring the organ down for me. That's, that's too loud in the, in the monitor. I think that's the way you like it. I don't that. Bring that down a little bit. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we, praise the Lord. This truth, hallelujah, is from one generation to the other. When God said that holiness was right, it was right in my mother's day. And it's right today. The Bible said, follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And I heard Paul say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. What is the word therefore relating to? What is therefore, therefore? Well, if you go back to Romans chapter 11 and you start with verse 33, the apostle Paul gives an amazing doxology. He says, oh, the depth of the riches, uh, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And he says it with an exclamation point. He says, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. He says, who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him? And it shall not be recompensed unto him. For in him, for of him, and through him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Since everything is for him and everything is to him and he made everything and nobody counseled him and nobody advised him and whatever we do for him, it will be recompensed many times over. He's wiser than we are. He's glorious and you'll never be able to 
to see him coming because his ways, the way he does things, are past finding out. Have you ever been in a situation and you didn't see how you were going to, how it was going to work out, but somehow the Lord stepped in and made a way for you? Have you ever been down for the count and didn't know how? You were going to uh, get out of that. Hallelujah. And the Lord came in and blessed you. If you know what I'm talking about, lift your hands and say, we serve a God whose ways is past finding out. See, some of us have limited our deliverance to the mailbox. So we go to the mailbox looking for God to bless us. We've limited God to our mother. So we call mama and say, mama, can you help me out? We've limited God's hands to friends. But saints, I'm here to tell you, take the limit off the Lord. Tell God any way you bless me. I'll be satisfied. I'll just wait and just wait on you. And when the Lord gets ready, he may use the ravens. He may use a dog. He may use the mailman. He may use a cat. But he knows how to bless you. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. Lift your hands and praise the God whose ways are past finding out. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell him thank you. I beseech you, brethren, Gentile and Jew, all of you. Look at your neighbor and say, this includes me. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, that your body, not just your mind, I didn't get an amen there, but your body, where you go, how you live, what you do with it, who you have sex with, God Almighty, what you dance to, what you put in it, what you put on it, you present your body, not a dead sacrifice, not a ram or a goat, but you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy! I wish I had a praying church. Somebody say, Holy! Holy and acceptable unto God. I wonder today how many of us are doing what is acceptable, that is well pleasing unto God with our bodies, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your logical worship. See, we think that this is worship. We think that uh, singing some slow song all day, that's worship. We think losing our emotion is worship. But true worship is lifestyle. It's how you live. It's where you go. It's how you pay your bills. It's how you maintain yourself. Lord, give me power to worship you right. Say yeah. I can't get any help in here today. You don't like me, but I'm telling you the truth. And I heard him. He said, it's your reasonable worship. And here's my clothes here. And be not conformed to this world. Hallelujah. Don't let the world shape you. Don't let the world mold you. Y'all, please stop trying to sing like Beyonce and Brandy and Minaj and the world. Oh, my Lord. Tell those so-called Christian rappers, stop trying to be Snoop Dogs, Jay-Z's, and all the rest of them. That's just being molded by the world. There's a better model. There's a better model at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the 
redeemed. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise him for the cross. Praise him for his power. Praise him for his anointing. How many know he's good? How many know he's good? Let me see you praise him like they used to praise him. Let me see you get happy. Thank you, Jesus, for the Lord is good. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is wonderful. Praise him in the house. Praise him. Yeah. Somebody go on and break the mold. Break the mold. Break the mold. Break the mold. Break out of it. Tell the world, I'm not going to be like you want me to be. I refuse to be a hip hop preacher. I refuse to be a preacher all tatted up, earrings in my ears, pants hanging off my rear end, looking like I'm on my way to a club. The devil is a liar. I refuse to have a limp wrist. I refuse to sound like a punk. The devil is a liar. A hallelujah. I refuse to conform. Say yeah. Do I have anybody who feel like I feel? If you're here, tell the devil I won't conform. I won't conform. I just want to hear the holiness people. Praise the Lord. I won't conform. I won't conform. Yeah! Ah! Watch me. Watch me kill my amen. But prophetess Janet Floyd was preaching at the Victorious Praise Church of God in Christ. I went to hear one night, and while she was preaching, there was a young lady there. And the young lady came up and she gave an offering. And the prophetess said to the young lady, she said, young lady, you got on the right dress, but for the wrong place. Said, because that dress, that's for the club. That ain't for the house of God. It was so tight that it looked like she was melted and poured in it. It showed every lump, every bump, every swerve, every curve. Good God Almighty. And she told her it's the right dress, but the wrong house. I want to know today who will say, Lord, let me put on the right outfit for the right house. I come to praise him. I come to praise his name. Come to lift him up. Come to give him glory. I can't get any help in here. But you know I'm telling the truth. The world is trying to make us. And they're trying to mold us. But I want to hear some defiant people. I want you to push back. and Push against the world. Happy warriors, push against the world. Choir members, push against the world. Saints, push against the world. Say yeah. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Let me show you something here. Let me, let me, one thing here, and I'm almost done. That brother Kenneth West said something that I really like. He said, stop assuming an outward expression, which is pattern after this world, an expression that does not come from, nor is it representative of what you are as a regenerated child of God. Well, well, well. Thank you, Jesus. You ought to look like you've been regenerated. Why, why assume a look or an expression that make you look like you hadn't been saved yet? What is this? What is this? 
That guy that married one of those uh, Kardashian girls, it's, what's it? Kanye West. You know, everybody that marries them go crazy. So I don't know what, I don't know, maybe it's something, that, maybe something in the water. But they messed the brother up. And uh, uh, Kanye West said to somebody one time, I'm not going to smile for you. So the, the, the world, the world is to keep a solemn look. But let me tell you something. When you get saved, See, when the Lord lays his hand on you, when, when you've been born again, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I wonder, does anybody here have joy? Joy! Ah, joy! Joy! It get all in my hand. Get all in my feet. Get all in my facial expression. I'm glad. I wish I had some glad folk in here. Oh, I'm glad that I've been born again. Say yeah. Yes. How, how do you renew your mind? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed Transform is to be changed. But see, you got direction with it. You got direction with it. From one place to another place. How are you changed? By the renewing of your mind. How do you, do you do that? You know what it starts with? The believer. Come to church. Come to church. Come to church. Come to church, come to church, come to church, have church, have church, have church, have church, same thing. See, in case you're forgetting it, let me tell you again, let me say, in case you've forgotten, let me tell you again, oh my, in case the devil came and told you not to do it, you're right back at church. Oh, I'm old Turner, I think about it, old Turner, every Sunday, here we come, walking in, every Sunday, walking in, walking into the church. Every first and the third Sunday, walking in, here comes the pastor. Here comes the pastor. Here's what you knew. You go get the word of God. All you got to do is just listen. And if, if some strange had come up in my mind, that maybe around Wednesday, by the time the pastor got through on Sunday, I let that thing go because my mind was renewed again. My mind was renovated again. All of a sudden, all now you compare that. Combine that with Bible study. Bible study. You're in the Word. You're in the Word. Oh, when you get drafted into the NFL, they, you know, they, 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 they really, I like sports, they really praise those players who learn the playbook. Oh, they, they talk about the ones who study day and night. Sometimes they, they go in at 6 a.m. and they don't leave till midnight learning, learning, watching plays, watching plays, reading the playbook over and over and over until it becomes second nature, until it becomes second nature. We bring our Bibles on Sunday. We open them on Sunday. We don't open them again till the next Sunday. Then when, we, when the preacher do preach, you ain't paying attention. You're looking off somewhere in la-la land. No wonder the devil is getting through our minds because we're not allowing the renovation, the process to take place. Pray, 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 pray. We pray together. We pray at home. You pray. You pray on a regular basis. You pray. You talk to God. You talk to God. Anything you do on a regular basis over and over and over that thing gets into your head instead of all that junk that's in your head. You think everybody's against you. You think everybody's talking about you. You think everybody's mad at you. That's because your mind hadn't been renewed because you don't come to get it renewed. Then you sit with somebody who's just as dead as you are and both of you are going to hell together. But if that's where you want to go, go on with your bad self. But I'm going with Jesus just the same. I won't conform. Anybody can be a whole master. Anybody can play church. It doesn't take intelligence to do that. Anybody can slip and dip. It doesn't take intelligence to do that. But you renew your mind by what you feed yourself over and over and over and over. But be renewed. Oh, we'll see. 
uh, in your mind that you may have access. Not prove as, as though prove to someone else. Prove, literally, have access. That you may discern. So you study and you pray and you seek God to where you, now you're able to recognize right. You're able to recognize right. Some of you, you can't, some of you kids, you know, I don't understand. You, you see, you can't recognize right because you're not committed enough and then you don't have parents who are going to tell you. I don't care, what, I don't care what, what spirit you're struggling with, whatever the devil's trying to do. If you keep that word before you and keep the word before you and keep the word before you and come to church and pray and get off that phone and keep the word before you and just if you have to steal away, keep that word before you. My God, that thing, that thing, you will arrest that thing. You will arrest it. Now, who understands this? Some of y'all won't say amen, but who understands this? The media, Hollywood, the left. That's what our opponents do. They, they constantly, in every commercial, I, I, watched a, I watched a commercial the other day to advertise a new birth control thing. What was that thing? Uh, they show some pretty girl. Woo! So she, but here's what they do. It's like Patrick Wooden is watching. They make sure when she hugs her boyfriend, they make sure you know it's her boyfriend. Because when she hugged, they show both hands. No rings. So she's not married. And she's, she's wondering, did I, did, I, did I forget? Did I take my pill? Did I take my pill? Did I take my pill? So they're pushing for indication. Then, then they go to all of the side effects. That could happen with the pill. And then, then in my mind, I finished the commercial. After they talked about all the side effects, they could call this, they could call that. And then there's one other alternative. Or... Oh, Here's my ending. Or you could just live holy. Live holy. You ain't got to remember whether or not you brought a pill. You got to remember all that. All that. Or you could just, you could just live holy. The world knows how to, oh, uh, the progressive insurance. The main people that's talking on the progressive insurance commercial, the ones, who, you know, they got all the couples and they're talking about, you know, not, not outliving your money. The homosexual couple do all the talking. How did this happen? The homosexual, the, the, the homosexual, the couple that shouldn't even be a couple does all the talk. Why do you think that is? They are reinforcing that stuff. The world knows that if you keep it before people's eyes, keep it before them, keep it before them, keep it before them, that will renew your mind. You will buy that stuff because that's all you listen to. Some of you closeted uh, people who ingest all that wicked hip hop and stuff like that you ain't you ain't you ain't fool nobody that's why you can't get delivered that's why you can't get free that's why you can't get right you are what you ingest you are what your habits say you are you will think what you keep before you so you renovate your mind there ain't no magic thing there ain't no magic thing it's action. That's why so few minds get renovated. Because, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. Go put it all on me. It's all my job. Pray for me. Let's see. Don't even, won't even lift your hands right. Pray for me that I get my mind renewed. You got to work on your own mind. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to keep you from being lost. Let me tell you something. Now, why? Uh, uh, my time's up. But I'm, doing, I'm doing good today. But let me tell you something. I, I taught them today in the 8 o'clock class, a side of God. I said, now, what I'm getting ready to teach you now, uh, if, you, if you're thinking at all, it'll make you do right. It just, you know, you, you just throw up your hands. You know what? I quit. I'm just going to live home. Jeremiah 15. The gap between Jeremiah 15 and Jeremiah 14 shouldn't even exist. Jeremiah 14 closed with Jeremiah praying one of the prettiest prayers that, that a man could pray to get God to forgive Judah. God responds in chapter 15 and tell, tells Jeremiah, if Moses and Samuel asked me to forgive these people, I wouldn't do it. You know why? God said they went too far. I've been, I've been trying to tell them, I've been trying to tell them, they went too far. He says, and, and cast them out of my sight. Woo, I never read, God said, God said cast them out, get, get them away from me. 
And they, they, so they said, they said to Jeremiah, said, well, where will we go? If, if the Lord says, God said, now they're going to ask you when I tell them, cast them out of my sight. Right. Where, where are they going? God said, tell those who are appointed to death, go die. Tell those who are appointed to the sword, go get cut. Tell those who are appointed to famine, they better get happy being hungry. And tell those who are appointed to uh, captivity that they're going into captivity. They went too far. Now, after the Lord have shown you mercy, and God have talked to you, and sent the word to you, and, 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 and reached out to you, there come a time. There come a time when you got to get right. Oh, oh, they out there running when the Lord gets ready to save them. The Lord will bring them in. Oh, so it's that God's not ready. Is that the problem? Oh, that's why he's robbing banks. God ain't ready for him to, not, to stop yet. Well, that's why he's going from man to man and girl to girl. The, the problem is God. God's not ready. So if that's, if that's the case, what are we preaching for? What do I mean? We've got a choir singing and I've got all this money. Invested in equipment, y'all getting ready to give a whole lot of money, your offerings, a tithe. If the issue is that God's not ready, what's the point? No, oh, no. I warn you. Let the Lord renew your mind. Don't conform. We're a hole in this church. A friend of mine. A friend of mine was telling me, because you know we got all these smart guys in the body of Christ now. So many smart ones. Well, it's amazing to me. Oh, everybody's smart. I think I'm just going to stay a dumb preacher. I, 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 the, the, the dumb logic makes more sense to me. God said another day, everywhere you see the word Christian, we ought to remove the word Christian and replace the word Christian with the word believer. Because see, we're believers. We're not Christians. I talk, like I said, I, I'm telling you. And it uh, says, uh, you know, Christian was a term of, uh, was a derogative term. Christian was, it was meant as a term of derision. But the definition was still the same. Christian never meant murderer. Christian never meant killer. Christian never meant rapist. Christian never meant uh, uh, child molester. Christian, the definition of the word never changed, meant to act like Christ. It was only a term of derision because people who didn't love Christ called them Christians. Now, if you love Christ and they call you Christian, that explains why the Christians embraced the word because they went, oh, Oh, Christ-like? Oh, I can live with that. Yeah, well, we, you know what? We're going to go from calling this movement the way to Christianity. Because, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Now, I think, I think Christian is better if you got to, if you got to choose. Now, and you don't have to. But if you got to choose whether you're going to be called a Christian or a believer, I'd rather be called a Christian. Why? Because the word believer is ambiguous. It depends on who's using it. If I'm a Muslim, it means I believe in Allah. If I'm a Buddhist, Buddha is my God. If I am a Satanist and I'm a believer, then Satan's my man. But if you're a Christian, Uh, when you say Christian, it can only mean one, one movement, one way, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then I heard the Bible say, Peter said, if any man suffer as being a what? A Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. I'm glad today. That I am a Christian. I'm glad that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. And I will not conform. I will not conform. I will not conform. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shed 
everything that leans, lends itself to my conformity to the world. You want to stay in my life? Want to stay together? Encourage me to stay on the road. But if you, if you start pulling me the wrong way, nice knowing you. Because I can't conform. I, I got to stay over here. I got to stay over here on the Lord's side. Who today won't conform to this world? I mean, to, to conform to this world, now you got to believe in transgenderism. What? Man walking around calling himself a woman. A man who thinks that he can mutilate his body and become a woman. You want me to believe that? Oh, the devil is a liar. Look at this. Here we are. We're, we're, in, the, we're in the clothes. We're, we're, listen, uh, the, the credit card companies, they get ready to announce it. They get ready to announce that you don't have to sign. You know how you sign it with your finger? That, see, everything now is on the, the chip that's on the card. Amen. Just put the chip in. The card with the chip. You know, everybody's card got a chip on it. They're just a few innovations away. See, because they got to sell it to you slowly. They can't do it fast. Because they know if they do it quickly, there'd be a revolt with the people. Because the people will recognize it. We, we slow, but we ain't that slow. The masses are unwashed. But some are washed enough to sound the alarm. So you know what you do? You know what you do? You... On your way to getting them to accept the mark, the chip in their hand or their forehead, put it on the car. But you need a signature with the car. Okay, let's do away with the signature. In time, they're going to do away with the car. The technology is in place now to do away with the car. Well, where do you put it? You put it in your hand or you put it in your head. Now, the Bible speaks to that. See, technology. Technology is just now beginning to catch up with the Bible. John saw it a long time ago. Now they're just now catching up. We're, well, what, what's my point? We're close to the coming of Jesus. Don't you get this close? And then here you are. You done swam the whole ocean. Got past the breakers. Made it through the reef. There's the shore right there. And you're going to drown. Uh-uh, no, no. Uh-uh, no, I, I, I'm not conforming. Everybody who wants prayer to victoriously, I ain't I'm not talking about hang on, but to victoriously stand your ground for Jesus. Stand your ground as a believer. Ask God to gird up the loins of your mind. Ask God to strengthen your mind. Come to the altar.